Okay, for today's session, we are working on how to fix the lazy glutes. We've got a lot of people talking about lazy glutes and their glute muscles not firing and they're struggling to get them firing. So I'm gonna show you three things today that I want you to work on to try and get those glutes firing. Now these exercises are not really glute strengthening, it's glute activation or firing them up. So it's stuff that you need to do pre glute strengthening. You know, we do a lot of glute strengthening exercises with like one-legged squats and step downs and physio lunges and you know working on leg pressing and squats and deadlifts lots and lots of glute work but a lot of people are doing these exercises without their actual glute firing or working properly so we're going to bring it back a stage and get you working on the firing or the activation level to get those lazy glutes actually working so then when you go do these other high level exercises they're working for you and your body's not compensating or your back's not compensating or your hamstrings are not compensating for the fact that your glutes aren't working and you can get the most benefit out of those exercises. So let's start with the first one. My favourite one is actually a glute ham sort of leg lift. So what I want you to do is down onto your front and with this one, what I want you working on is one side at a time. Very important that you work on one side at a time, not two. A lot of people have a, a lazy like left or lazy right glute, depending if they're left or right footed. And what you've really got to focus on is making sure you've got one hand on that glute. And we're talking about the glute max. Now remember the glute max muscle, it works on demand. It's a very complex muscle, very powerful muscle, but it works on demand. It usually works when there's enough load, enough recruitment, then it'll fire up. So a lot of people, they'll raise their leg and their buttock, mine's actually working, but their buttock doesn't work. So they raise their leg and it's all floppy in here. Okay, so we've got to get that glute pre-firing by activating and trying to get your brain switching it on. So what I want you working on is trying to make sure that your glute is fired before you raise your legs. So it's a, it's a leg raise, but let's, well, let's walk you through it. First thing is, first, you can't be in this extended position, otherwise your back's going to fire up all the time. You've got to be in neutral. So what I want you to do is make sure from here, you just do a little tilt back. So you're just flattening that curve out a bit from, from hyperextended to a bit of flat. And that means you have to bring your pelvic floor on to get your TA on, get that transverse abdominis working. Once you've got that on, you've got to think about, okay, I want my left buttock switching on. Okay, so you've got to clench that left buttock there. Sometimes it's good to whack it a little bit. And from there, I want you just extending the hip. Okay, it doesn't have to be far. Some people go a little too far and they start extending their back. So make sure that stays neutral, keep that pelvic floor on, clench your buttock, extend your leg, all right? And you can hold it there for a good sort of three or four seconds to get that activation, even up to 10 to get more activation, more endurance in it, and then release and down. And I like to have my head here so I can concentrate, really think about it, pelvic tilt, pelvic floor on, TA on, clench my buttock, raise my leg, hold it there, get some really good activation, and down. And I'd work on about sort of 10 repetitions in a set, get a good two or three sets out before you move on to the next exercise. So that's your glute activation for prone glute ham raise. Really good exercise. The second one is going back to a little bit of Pilates. Going into doing bridges. Now, Listen, these are very low level exercises, but they're great for activation. They're great for getting those lazy muscles switched on, right? So when you're in this position, again, you're going to do a bridge. But a lot of people do this wrong. They go up there and they're using their back and using their hammies and their buttocks still floppy and doing nothing. You've got to get that hip extended. And some people are so tight anteriorly in the front that they can't extend. So again, you've got to loosen that up to make sure that's nice and loose. But what I want you working on, again, is focusing on, I've got to do hip extension. My glute max is going to work in hip extension. So when I extend my hips, not when I extend my back. All right, so get that spine in neutral. Now, to get your glute firing, the trick in the bridge to activate and fire your glute, is think about pushing your heels down through the floor. Don't think about, oh, I've got to lift my hips up. Push your heels down through the floor. And as you push down, my load is through the heels, I've got to clench my buttocks. As though you're squeezing them together and extend the hip and push down at the same time. So I arrive there with my glutes on, my hammies are really working, and my back's really happy. And then lower down through your glutes and your legs so you arrive back in a neutral position. 
Now, to make that work harder, what I like to do is get a TheraBand around both knees here, so I'm pushing out against the band. All right? When I push out against the band, I'm going to fire my lateral rotators and deep inside the hip to stabilize the hip. If my, this is great for stabilization and really good for working on your lateral rotators and your glute knees and that sort of thing, but this exercise here, if I fire my lateral rotators more, my glute max has got a better chance of firing because my hip's stable. Okay, so this exercise, you'll feel it burn more, you'll go, oh, I'm working in here more, but it actually allows you to fire your glute max more. So from here, I'm pushing out against the band, I'm still parallel, and I'm gonna push through my heels, clench my buttocks, and really squeeze through here, maximal squeeze through here, not through here, and then lower down to the floor. You can actually advance this if you want, so you can move into the next sort of stage exercise where you're doing ball hip extension. So it's just hip extension on a ball. Some people, you see these, they're on a bench and they've got weights and doing hip thrusts. This one here, when you're doing this exercise, be careful that when you push up, again, you're not trying to extend your back. So what you can aim for from here is making sure as you push up, you make sure that pelvis stays neutral. So I'm just tilting my pelvis back because as I come up, I want to extend my back and I don't really want to do that. So when I get to there, I'm really switching on my heels, uh, my glutes, I'm pushing my heels down so I'm maximal for my legs, my back's happy, my core's on, and then when I release, I release through the hips here. So I release down into that nice squat position, and that's again, your glutes gonna fire when you're in flexion, okay? When you're deep in flexion, when you push, it's gonna fire, and then it's gonna fire again when you're up in that end range extension up into here. And you've got to make sure you're clenched all the way up and down. So really important tip there for those ones. Then the last one I like working on is doing a four point hip extension. Now this activates your core a little bit more, so it's a little bit harder to challenge for your core stability. If your core stability is not great, it's a little bit harder. But what I want you to work on is get into that nice four point position where you're you're trying to get your thighs straight down. Sometimes it's easier if you look in a mirror. And I want you working on making sure that lower back is a neutral, pelvic floor is engaging your TA, and you're going to put weight through your hands, make sure your shoulders are protracted, and you're going to extend one leg up like that. Now again, it's very much a sort of a low level exercise, but what I like doing, get your band out again, tie it around one foot, so it's locked in there, okay? And then get it around the opposite knee. So it's locked in there. And what I want you to work on, now you've got some resistance to work on. You've got to make sure though, that you do not overextend your back. So you can't come up into here, I'll just put that down there a little bit. You can't come into here and then go and extend your back, all right? So you've got to make sure that, oh, my back's neutral. When I come up, my hamstring's gonna fight, but I really need to find and clench my glute Think about pushing your heel up to the ceiling and as you go high, you've got to really fight here. Make sure that back's not working too hard. Make sure it's all glute here and all abdominal or anterior section here. Push as high as you go, really get that contraction and then down. So it doesn't have to be a heavy load and it's not definitely not a heavy load like you would doing a squat or a deadlift, but you're getting really maximal workout on the glutes because you're contracting and squeezing as much as possible over a long period of time, over that sort of 10 second period. So work on those three exercises, and that'll start activating your glutes, stop you sort of having them too lazy when you do your normal exercise, and then you'll find that you'll get better control, better activation, and those strengthening exercises that use your glutes actually work for you.